So there's, it's about unconventional in our regulatory framework. And what we were really hoping to do is make this an update. So that would assume that you know all the front end and we just concentrate on the back end. But I think from what I've heard in some others that there's a need to keep reinforcing why are we doing this. So the first part of the discussion is going to talk a little bit why is there a need for a change? Why do we need a new regulatory framework? Because if we can't articulate the, the need for a change, then it's really hard to understand why should I be going through the motions. If you, can't, if you don't believe that we should be changing because you don't know what the business driver is, then we're going to lose you on the next two pieces. And the next two pieces are what is the change? What are we looking at? And the final piece is why do I care? How does it impact on me? And by me, that could be the folks in this room, the rest of the folks in the ERCB, but it's also our external partners, so government, industry, and, and landowners. There's three significant components, and each one of those could probably be a two-hour presentation in itself. So I'll walk through some of it fairly quickly. First off, this gives a bunch of pieces here that'll help determine what a conventional reservoir is, and that's critical. If you know what a conventional is, then the unconventional makes more sense. But the two big things there to keep in mind is that in a conventional reservoir, it's got good porosity and permeability, and the key difference is the permeability piece. And what that is, is just the ability for fluids to flow through rock. So you could pores that the, the fluids are trapped in, and they can be trapped in those pores, but if there's no connections between the pores, the fluid doesn't flow. So you drill a well into a conventional reservoir, a good conventional reservoir, and fluids rush to that well bore, and in the worst case scenario, you can have a blowout. So when that happens, you know you've got a conventional reservoir. On an unconventional reservoir, you may have that porosity, but there's, there's essentially no permeability. So you drill a well into that, nothing happens. So somehow you have to stimulate flow. And then if we were talking about oil sands, the reason the stuff won't flow is because it's too viscous. So you need to apply some sort of something to, to loosen it up, and usually it's thermal energy. In this case, it's, it'll, it's light enough to flow, methane will flow, but there's no pore spaces. So you have to develop those pore spaces. And that's where hydraulic fracturing comes in. And uh, Ron McDonald here, if you haven't all signed up for his piece, is going to explain what horizontal drilling and, and hydraulic fracturing. So this one I do spend a bit of time on if people aren't really too comfortable what the difference is. But it shows a classic reservoir, although much deeper than what this depicts. And if you're looking at the shale seal or the, the shale on the, on the left, often those shales, if it's a good organic rich shale, are our source rock and to fill these reservoirs. And now we're going after source rock in the unconventional world. But the difference here is that fluid can move up and down within those, those three colors. And the reason there's three colors there is because they're different densities. And gas sits on top of oil. It sits on top of water. And I generally bring a little jar I call my lawyer jar. I don't think there's any lawyers in the room to show what that looks like. Because you can tilt it any way you want, but you always get those layers. You can shake it, and they'll eventually still layer out. And that's exactly what happens in a conventional reservoir. And fluids are able to move through it. So that's, that's what the difference between them. So, so what? So why do, why do we have to change the way we do our business? And there's a, on a previous slide I've had in presentation, there's a whole raft of different criteria that says these are the reasons why I want to change. But it really fundamentally comes down to two things that have changed that we need to pay attention to. And one of them is uh, advancing the technology itself. So you've heard about horizontal drilling and you've heard about multi-stage hydraulic fracturing. And it's the combination of those, it's allowed access to reservoirs that we couldn't produce before. And so that really started in, it started, uh, horizontal drilling's been around in Alberta since um, about the 80s, early 80s. Hydraulic fracturing's been around since the 1950s. But the combination of those two technologies really started in the United States for shale gas, and that was in, well, it started in the 1990s, but really took off in about 2004. That kind of technology is being applied in Alberta started in late 2008 and into 2009. So it's relatively recent, and our numbers on it are we've had 171,000 wells hydraulically fractured in Alberta starting in about 1950. And the last count as about a week ago, we've had about 4,200 wells that fit that category of horizontal and multi-stage hydraulically fracked. The, the, it's, so it's the technology, that's number one that sets it apart. But that, as I mentioned, it, that technology is not just exclusive to uh, it it's can be it's, right now it's being applied to our conventional reservoir, so it can be applied to any reservoir. It doesn't have to be just shale gas, and so we start off with this project looking at shale gas, but we quickly realized it's being used in our oil reservoirs and some of our what have been historically our conventional oil reservoirs. So it can be used in any reservoir, but it's the second uh, piece too that 
is different. That is really where our focus for URF is going to go, and it's the scale of the resource. So there's a big difference in the size of the resource from an unconventional, and I'll try to describe that in the next slide. And then the piece we already talked about is that the new res these new resource plays lack permeability, so that ability to flow. So three things that have made the change. One is new technology, uh, the size and scope of these, these, these things, and the other is you need something to get that fluid out and you need to crack it up, you need to artificially create permeability, and that's what the hydraulic fracturing process does. I threw this one in to give a sense of the scope and scale, because that's one of the ones that I think people scratch their heads a little bit about. Yeah, this is a snapshot in time of deposition of material, so you have to imagine that when we get around to drilling a well through this, you've added a few million years and probably a few kilometers of sediment sitting on top of this, so it's a snapshot of what was going on. But when you look at these things like a delta, and if you can imagine yourself walk along your favorite beach on this delta, this would be a, a great conventional reservoir, as would these barrier bars, which are sands just offshore. And then if you have reef buildup and you can snorkel through the reef, those are our true conventional reservoirs. That's good reservoir quality rock, typically. And if you look at the size of these, which you can't really get a sense of, but they're relatively small. So even in the subsurface, when we're exploring for those, they may be mile or two miles in length and maybe a few hundred kilometers in width, relatively small. The rock we're talking about when we get into resource plays or shale plays is what is typically deposited way out here. So at the time this is deposited, it's, it's marine deposition. So it's very, very fine sediment that gets carried way out into the ocean, settles to the ocean floor, gets mixed in with plankton and other organic matter and builds this layer of, of if it's in the perfect scenario, organic rich muds. And then you pile a bunch of stuff on top of that, eventually it gets compressed and under pressure and temperature converts into shale. And if you've kept that organic matter, it's organic rich, beautiful source rock for your oil and gas to form. But the thing to note is the size and scale. So where these may have only been a section or half a section in size, these things can be townships in size. So once you, they're not hard to find. In the old days, exploring for these was difficult. When you're out looking for a conventional pool, the trick was to find one. Once you found one, it's easy to produce the fluids. In the mod and when we're looking for resource plays, it, we know where they are in the subsurface. We've got lots of wells that have drilled through them, so it's not hard to find them. The trick is to figure out how to get the fluids out, and that's where hydraulic fracking has come in. The fluids are in there, it's trapped, and that allows it to be released to the well bore. So, but it's the scale that is so different than anything we've had to deal with before. So this one is... Uh, this would be a, as good as reservoir rock you'll ever see. It's, it's very porous. You can probably even from the back see little holes in it. I'll pass it around. It's very permeable, and I test that, and hopefully nobody's from this room is watching, but if you pour water in one of the top holes, it dribbles out the floor. So all these little pore spaces are all connected, and that's where the permeability comes in. There's a view that our reservoirs are big caverns underground, but they're not. This is, as, this is the best you'll ever see. So I'll pass around, you get a sense of what a Greg's seen this before, so it's not new to him. And then uh, a more typical reservoir in Alberta would be a sand reservoir. Same sort of thing. It's got porosity and permeability. I can pour water on. It'll eventually soak in. You probably won't get to see it fall through, but it's already starting. To, I'll pretend it's soaking here. I'll pass it on. And then finally, if you take a shale like this, I won't even bother pouring water on because all it'll do is make the surface wet. It'll never soak through. We could sit here for miss our supper and a lot more, and that water is not going to soak through this rock simply because it lacks permeability.